Right. Good afternoon. Um, this is a little talk on drone control and specifically how we could use the angle and magnitude criteria to design a PD controller. So that's what we're going to try and get to. Um, here's the little drone that I'm going to control and fly using the PD controller. Um, it's a Parrot mini drone. And you can tell it's working because the, uh, the little lights are flashing there. And it's a quadcopter um, with four propellers on, some guards on. These fall off when it crashes, which is quite good because it crashes quite often. Um, and I just want to go through some of the elementary dynamic modelling and transfer functions so as we can understand where the transfer functions have come from when we do our PD design. So, if we think of our little quad here, um, it can do various manoeuvres, but the main manoeuvre we're looking at today is that a vertical translation. So all four rotors now will provide upward thrust when you switch them on. So we could think of the quad here as having four rotors, some mass, it's not, it doesn't weigh much, it weighs about about one newton, I reckon, slightly under a newton. Um, so I've reduced about a newton. Um, got four, so a quarter each, so they provide some sort of thrust. It's got a mass and it can move up and down in this plane. So we can apply now Newton's laws of motion, F equals ma, but the thrust, rather than force, call it thrust, is m, and then we tend to call z. Now z uh, is like the motion up and down, and we tend to have z as positive going down because that, that's the natural tendency but to fall down when you let it go so Z will be in that direction and so we can say that thrust is called MZ double dot and we know that Z double dot can be represented by uh, 1 over S squared or S, S squared Z not that 1 over S squared S squared Z so if, we go, so if you like just get rid of this and then we can say that Z double dot is equal to d2 by dt squared times z, which would be s squared z. So we can replace z double dot by s squared z, move the s into there, and that gives a transfer function now that the z is equal to 1 over ms squared times t, where t is the thrust. So there's a sort of starting off position for our model. We've also got a motor though, there's some little motors on these, they're only quite small motors, you can probably see them there. There's the motor there but they're quite powerful little things if you put your finger in there what's going it, it does hurt um, so the, the thrust can be modeled by a first order lag k over 1 plus st times some voltage that you apply to the motor so we could add that in as a little front end to our transfer function and this gives us then the overall transfer function that we will play with and we've got to choose k and t now t is quite quick. Those motors go around very quickly. If you increase the voltage, it does increase quickly. And I found T for these motors, T to be 0.05 of a second. So they're quite quick little motors. They can increase their speed in about 50 milliseconds. So 50 milliseconds, quite quick. Now, there's one extra little trick though we need to bear in mind here for the real application, which is that obviously when we're applying this equation here, this drone, it's like in a gravity field. So if I, if I drop it, I drop it, it does fall. And so we've got mg now pulling it down. So we've actually got f minus mg equals m double dot. Uh, so t minus mg is mz double dot, where this is z here. So what we do in, a, in the drone control, we apply some pre-force, pre-voltage if you like, to the motors, which compensate for the weight of the helicopter or the, or the drone. This is like a feed-forward term. So it's an extra term there that we apply to the, to, the, to the voltage here. And that voltage, if you apply that, it'll just make it so neutrally buoyant. Now the trouble with this feed-forward term is that you can't get it exact because the how quickly it comes up will depend on how well the battery is charged. But it'll not be far off running at full power speeds, but they might not run at full power, they might run at say 
95% of full power. In which case, this term will exactly cancel the weight of the thing. So, um, so in our overall flight control system, then we have this type of arrangement. Um, we've got the this is the bit that, that feed forwards. It, there's our transfer function. This is the bit of feed forward signal that like neutralizes the weight, so as it, it hasn't got any weight, it hasn't got gravity to contend with. We normally have a PD controller in here, but we just put a little bit of I in. And the I gets rid of steady state error. And so because you can't exactly balance this signal here against the true weight of the helicopter or the, the drone, then we'll need to try a very small amount of I just to make sure that the error in the steady state goes to zero. So what can happen is, because I've done this quite a few times, I can just do a little sketch for you, I've two sketches. So let's say the battery's in really good condition, then this signal will be spot on, and it'll just come up and do that. But say your battery's not as good, it'll come up, go down, and it'll just dawdle down there somewhere. Not much, only about two or three percent, but it will dawdle below the steady state, and then the eye will just slowly pull it up like that. So you can, if your battery's not quite right, you can get a transit of that. If your battery's in good condition, it'll, this signal will cancel out perfectly. So that's why we're having to have a little bit of eye in, but really the eye is so small that we don't need to consider it for design purposes, it's just a touch of eye. Um, so it's not a very big value by. So therefore the main design thinking now is we can do away on the model, that's a real drone, in the model for the simulation, we can do away with that term there, drop the eye, and look at a PD design for this now. And in order to do the PD design, we're going to use the angle and magnitude criteria, and then we can design into this then some different transient responses, some different damping ratios, some different overshoots, and try a whole range of designs, and then see which one we like best. So what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to use the angle and magnitude criteria to design the PD controller in four different cases. One is like lightly damped, two lightly damped, reasonably well lightly damped, critically damped, and heavily damped. There's four cases to look at, we'll do those designs, and then what we'll do is we'll put the controller games onto the quad and we'll fly it. So I've got the little video of each one flying, um, and what also can happen is, which you also see in the video, is sometimes the control system goes wrong for some reason, and then it just sort of zooms off, and then you hear a crash, and it comes back broken. Fortunately, you can buy new props, I've broken about 10 props on this, but these bits seem quite robust. They fall off these bits when, they, when it hits something. Quite handy, really. So, one good thing about a drone is make sure that the, the crash barriers like give rather than break, they just break off and go back on. But your props do go, you can buy new props, you get them from Amazon, and then they just pull off and put on, so it's quite easy. So, um, so this is our drone, and we're going to look at the drone control. And in particular, we're going to be looking at PD design for the model using the angle and magnitude criteria. And we'll do, as I say, four different designs and then you can watch it fly and see how you think it performs. So this is the first part. So thanks. We'll continue in a second. Okay, so now looking at PD controller design. And well, let's have quite a simple little slide this is fundamental to quite a few of our calculations. A lot of the controllers are implemented as KP plus KDS. So this is like U, that button, this is E. So we've got like U is KP plus KDS times E, or U is KP plus KD, then S times E is E dot. That's why it's the P P, P plus D controller. So that's how those control systems are implemented. The design technique that we're going to do though for the designs is a root loci design. Now root loci likes poles. Root loci likes poles. It's all done in poles. 
rather than the time constants or anything else. It's all been imposed. So we have to rewrite this as in some pole form. So I've rewritten it as K1 S plus K2. So this is rewritten in that format there. So this is a pole now, or a zero if you like, poles and zeros. We should call it zeros, I suppose. Poles and zeros, should be back to front. Um, so this is a zero, and it's in a, in a format for a zero, S plus something. So we got, know that K1 S plus K2 is the same as this. So therefore we can, we can do a sort of compare coefficients. We've got K1S is the same as KDS. So therefore K1 is KD. And we know that K1 times K2 is the term without the S in. So KP is K1 times K2. So what we'll do is when we're doing our designs, we have that in this format. And then we'll work out K1 and K2. And once we've got K1 and K2, we go back to this equation then to get the KD and the KP to go in here. And this will be the case now for all our designs that we do. So it's certainly well worth remembering this little video showing you how to go from there to there and there to there backwards and forwards. But this is like vital now because we have to do all our designs using the angle and magnitude criteria. In order to do that to root row site, and they design, they, they demand that the transfer functions are in pole zero format. Remember, pole zero format is where we have one s say plus two, and we'll say s plus six. That would be in pole zero format. If we had something like say four s plus nine, we'll get three s plus two. This now is not in pole zero format because you've got numbers in front of you. So you have to take those numbers out and have one S there and one S. It's got to be just one S in every single term to be in pole zero format for, for root row site. Okay, so next thing, we're just gonna have a quick reminder within PT controller design, um, what the angle and magnitude criteria were or are in terms of some sort of equations and how you can manipulate them. So imagine now we've got, this is a, an S-plane uh, diagram. This is real look this way, imaginary this way. And we plotted out on here now our poles. Here's our poles. And a little dot with a circle around as our zeros. And then, um, this point now we know, we have to know this point is on the root row side. So this point is definitely on the root row side. So we, we know that before we start. If we then draw straight lines from the point to all the poles and zeros, we can then measure some angles. And we're going to call the pole angles beta i and the zero angles alpha i. And the angle criteria is relatively simple. It says the sum of the zero angles minus some of the pole angles will come exactly to minus 180. And so if we do that for this particular example, I've got two zeros, alpha one and alpha two, so it'll be alpha one and alpha two. I've got four poles, so it'll be beta one plus beta two plus beta three, so minus those is equal to minus 180. And this now would be my angle criteria. And I'll say, if we didn't know this point was on the root row side, we could add these numbers up. If they came to 180, we would know they were there, that'd be one way you could use it. But what we're going to do is, we're going to do a slightly different trick. What we're going to do is, we're going to design, we're going to be designing a PD controller of the form of K1 S plus K2. So what we're going to be doing is add, designing a zero really, because the first thing we need to know is what that number is, K2. And K2 now will be a zero. So if we imagine now that this one here, this zero is at minus K2, but we don't know necessarily what K2 is. So if we took this equation now, so we know this point on the root row side, we would know what alpha one was. We wouldn't know what alpha two was, so alpha two would be unknown. That'd be unknown, but we'd know 
what theta 1 and theta 2 beta 3 and beta 4 were, and we'd know that that's minus 180. So this equation now you could solve for alpha 2. So our process is going to be, we're going to use the angle, angle criteria to work out where to put the zero in our PD controller by again, put, choosing some design points here for where we want the root loci to be, and then going into this equation, solving it for alpha 2, then if we draw a line here, so that one's parallel to this one, if we then measure, we solve for alpha 2, if we measure this angle here as alpha 2, so we draw the line in down alpha 2, and then measure from there to there, that will give us K2. So that's going to be our thinking behind this PD design in this um, root loci where the PD control is written as a gain and a zero. So that's going to be our thinking for the design now. We can choose this point here to be anywhere we like. So we can set, typically what we can do is we can set a second order system equation. S squared plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n squared equals naught. We can choose then an omega n and a zeta, stick them into this, and that will solve that equation, and we get some root minus a plus or minus bj. So this point then becomes the point minus a plus bj. So what we do is in our design, we choose what damping ratio and natural frequency we want for the system to behave, stick them into this equation, solve them using that equation minus b plus or minus the square of b squared minus 4 co 2 a gives us the root then, which appears here. Once we know where the root is, we can then draw these lines in to the poles and zeros, but we can't draw in to the zero added in by the PD controller because we don't know where it is. So, but when we get down to this equation now, we'll know all the variables in here except for alpha 2. So we can solve this for alpha 2, then go to the point, measure down alpha 2, and then this distance then is k2, and we've got part of our PD controller designed. Once we've done that then, we need to get k1. So we then fix this point at this point here, minus k2. We could then apply the magnitude criteria to this diagram now, and bingo, we would get k1. From it, so that be so that's our basic design PD design philosophy, if you like. We're going to design a K1 plus S plus K2. We're going to choose our second order system response, if you like, with terms of damping ratio and natural frequency. Get that point plotted in the argon diagram. Then drew our poles and zeros. Apply the angle criteria and solve it for alpha two. Then we get K2. This angle, alpha 2 gives us the angle, that distance gives us the k2, and then we've got the number that goes in from there. Once you've got that number fixed, we can then apply the um, magnitude criteria. Now, the magnitude criteria involves measuring, so you have to measure that one as m1, that one is m1 hat, that one is m2, that one as m2 hat. That one there, I'll say M3, and this one here is M4. So you could measure those. So you could measure those. You could use your ruler to do this. This is my specially designed ruler. It's not got any, it has got scales on it, like one, two, three, and it's got a reasonable scales on it. Um, you can measure those distances, stick them in then to this formula here, and you get K1. And then you'd have your K1 and your K2 in your overall design which would then guarantee that your complex roots, dominant complex roots, had these natural frequency dumping measures, which will again give you the sort of type of transient response you're expecting to get from the overall control system. So that's the basic thinking now behind using the angle and magnitude criteria to actually do the design for us. Right, so here's our first little drone example now. Here's our transfer function, 200 over s squared plus s plus 20. Here's our 
proportional distributive controller, uh, which is written in the pole form, so it's K1S plus K2. And then we're going to have to convert this into the control structure for the drone, uh, in the sense that this is asked to be the same as KP and KB. Um, so we can get that K1, K2 is KP, K1 times that K1. K1, that should be a mistake there. K1 uh, is the S term, so that's the KD. So K1 is KD, and K1, K2 is KP. Now let's have a look at our design. We're going to go for we're going to go for a lightly damp drone. I want to sort of to jump up and down a bit and stably just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going quite a low damping ratio, 0.35, natural frequency of five radians per second. This should give me something like about a 40% overshoot. Um, so stick these numbers now into s squared plus 2 zero omega n s plus omega n squared equals 0. Give me s squared plus 3.5 s plus 25. Solve this now using minus b plus minus square root, squared minus square root c over 2a. So that's minus 1.6 plus 4.98j. And that's this point here now, which I've drawn. So that distance there is minus 1.6. And this distance here is 4.8. So this is my desired point now to give me that damping natural frequency for the complex roots. And then I've got two poles at the origin here. So I draw a line in there and then measure beta 1 and beta 2. And those angles, I did measure them using my protractor and I was surprised how accurate it was. It was, it is really is 180 degrees. Uh, I'm surprised how good it is. And I've probably out in a, in a one degree, but I've done these in MATLAB, uh, 180 degrees. And then draw a line, I've got a pole at minus 20, so that goes all the way along there. And this angle turns out to be 15 degrees, so we can measure that again using the protractor. And then we can stick then, we've got a zero somewhere along here, I don't know where it is. And we can work out the position of the zero now using the angle criteria, because I know that alpha 1... Uh, minus beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3 is minus 108 degrees. That's the sum of the zeros. Minus the sum of the poles is minus 180. So I've got alpha 1, which I don't know, minus, then I've got 108 plus 108 plus 15 is equal to minus 180. So I can solve that and I get alpha 1 comes out as 51 degrees. I'll just check that in case I've got it completely wrong. Yes, 51 degrees. So my alpha 1 is 51, so I get my protractor now and look for 51 on this. So put it at this design point here and I look for 51. So 51 is about there. So that's, that's 51 degrees down that way. And then I draw the line in like this. Like that. And so that angle there is 51 degrees that I've got from this equation here. And now this is the position of my zero. So that's the minus k2. And if I measure this now, using my slightly constant ruler, it comes out as minus 5.5. So K2 now is 5.5. So that's going to be, so the controller is going to have an S, K1 into S plus 5.5. Uh, that's the configuration for my uh, for my zero and so I now need to work out the value for k1 I'm going to do that using the magnitude criteria so let's have a go at applying the magnitude criteria now so the magnitude criteria says that k1 times 200 divided by, and then I've got the this distance here, this is a zero distance, so I can call that um, one hat, so I can measure 
from there to there. That's going to be M1 hat. And then we've got M1, M2, and M3. So that distance there is M1 and M2, because it's got two poles there. And this long distance here is M3. I'll struggle to measure that with my ruler. But anyway, and that's going to equal 2, 1. So I could measure all those distances now, and I could solve for K1. And K1 comes out as 0 0.4. So that's 0 0.4. So this is the PD design now I've got. But I've got, I've got to convert this now into a, it's my zero sort of design. So I've got K1 is going to be, so I've got to get my KP and KD now. So KP will be given by that times that. So 0.4 times 5.5 comes out as 2.2. And KD, KD is all that number there. So it's equal to 0.4. So K1 is KD and K1, K2 is KP. So I can implement now my controller as 2.2, 2.2 even, 2.2 plus 0.4s. That's going to be my PD controller, if you like, on the drone. And I'm going to put the gains as KP is 2.2, KD is 0.4, and then I'm going to fly the drone and see how it responds. And I'm expecting it to sort of come up quite high, then come down, and then come back up stabilize out like that. So that's because it's going to be a lightly damped, because I've got quite a low damping ratio here. Yeah? If you go for too low damping ratio, it can just go unstable, and then it sort of zooms off somewhere and crashes. But anyway, that's the design now for the drone with a natural frequency of five and a low damping ratio. Right, so here's the design we're checking out. Here's our drone transfer functions here. We've checked, we're going for an omega n, five radians per second, damping ratio 0.35. So you could put those into the s squared plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n squared equation. Here's the roots, desired roots here, minus 1.6 plus or minus 4.7 j. And then we've implemented this controller here now which is a 0.4 into S plus 5.5. So if we look at, this is the root loci we've got here. And if we go along the root loci, when we get the gain at 0.4, which is here, we get the poles at minus 1.6 plus 4.7, damping at about 0.35 and the natural frequency at five, it's not quite spot on, but it's not far off. Quite a bit of overshoot on this, so this is not a very good design. It's going to give us a lot of overshoot and undershoot, so the, the quadcopter is going to be a bit more unstable. And we can then have a look at the closed loop simulation here. So this is the closed loop simulation with the gains that we've got using our root loci method, <clears throat> which are going to go over in a moment. And here's the sort of overshoot, but almost 50% overshoot on this. Uh, it's tracking 1.1, so it's not quite 50%, is it? Because <clears throat> the set point on the drone is 1.1. And here is the same controller now implemented on the drone. And this is the simulation. So you can see there's a good correlation between our simulation here, which is a bit of overshoot and shoot, and our real thing, which goes over and under as well. And then we can watch this now fly for real as it generated this particular signal um, as it flew. And this is a proportional plus derivative. Uh, this is the pole, this is the gain and the zero, and this is the final design that we implement on the drone. There's 2.2 for proportional, 0.4 for derivative.
Right, so here's another, here's an example now. So here's a transfer function, 200 S squared S plus 20, that's our drone transfer function for height. And we're designing PD controller K1 S plus K2. And this particular case is going for damping ratio of 0.75, natural frequency of 12 radians per second. So damping ratio of 0.75 will only give us about a 1% overshoot, so it's going to be more or less critically damped. I'm not going for a critically damped design, I'm just, this is my design, to get it up here really. So we've got the equation of s squared plus 2z to omega n s plus omega n squared equals 0 as our second order system equation. We put that number into here, and that number into here, and it becomes s squared plus 18s plus 144. We can then solve this using that formula, minus b, plus or minus the square of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and it comes out as minus 9 plus minus hj. This is our desired location now for the closed loop loops. So if you put this at a point, I've got my scales, so this is 0 to 10 this way, and this is 0 to 20 down here, and it's done accurately this using my, uh, using my like, ruler, used um, one unit as two. So that's minus 10, that's minus 20, that's minus 10, that's going to be minus 8 down there. This is the point of minus 8, minus 9, this hj. Now I've got two poles at the origin, and I've got one pole at minus 20, and I've got a zero to find at minus k2, so it's going to be a zero somewhere here at minus k2. That's what I'm trying to find. So we're going to, first thing to do now is to apply the angle criteria. So we'll have to do it in here. So the angle criteria, we'll say we can measure some angles now. So we've got an angle here, which is theta 1, and there's another one there as well, theta 2, because there's two poles. And there's another angle here, theta 3. So, and then the zero angle will be the alpha associated with the zero. So I've not worked that out yet, so that's what I'm going to try and get. So I'm going to get the alpha 1 minus, I need to measure beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. So I'm going to do that using my, my protractor. So this is quite a smart one that I've made. And um, I'm going to measure now beta 1. So let's see, beta 1, I reckon it's about 138 degrees. So it's going to be minus 138, minus another 138, or plus even. It's got a minus in there. And that's the two betas here. And then I've got to measure this one. So I'm going to measure this one next. And you know, look at that one. It's about just over 35, so I've got 36. So that's 36 equals minus 180. So I can solve that now for alpha 1. And alpha 1 comes out as 132. That's in degrees. So, next thing to do now is have a little line here. So this line has got to be parts that one. And then draw in an angle now, 132 degrees. So, I go to here. 132 is about there somewhere. That's an angle of 132 degrees. And now draw that line in. So, we draw the line in between this point and that point. Now I'll just go as accurate as I can. Draw the line in. So that's the that's the angle there, 132 degrees, which I've got from here. Draw that down, and then this distance here now that is at minus k2. And it's a zero. And if I measure that. I've not got good accuracy on this, but I reckon it is 1.66. So that's minus 1.66. And I've cheated if I'm truthful, because I did this in MATLAB. So the exact answer is actually minus is 1.66. So we know that number there now is 1.66. Next thing we've got to do is work out K1. So we can do that now 
by measuring off the diagram. So I could measure off that distance there. That's going to be M1 and M2. And this is going to be M3. And this distance here will be M1 hat. So I can now apply the magnitude criteria to this. So let's have a go at doing that. We'll do that in this, in this space here. So I've got a 200 up on here, so I get 200 times K1. So the forward loop transpose is K1 times 200 times M1 hat over M1, M2, M3 is equal to 1. So this is my magnitude criteria now. And I'm, I know everything in this except for K1. I can solve this for K1. And it comes out as... Things in hand, right? K1 comes out as 0.9. So I know this number here now is 0.9. So my overall design now is 0.9 into x plus 1.66. But I've got to convert it now into a PD controller because we'll get on the, on the drone it flies as KP plus KDS. That's how it flies on the drone. So I'm going to work out KP and KD now, so that's quite easy. So KP is K1, K2. So, multi so multiply 1.9 times 1.66, then I'll get 1.5. So KP comes out as 1.5. And then KD is simply 0.9. There's my design now. KP is 1.5, KD is 0.9, and it should then give me quite a fast response with hardly any overshoot at all. So it's almost like critically damped. So we're now going to put those numbers now, the 1.5 and the 0.9, going to download them now from MATLAB into the drone. It's not magic, this does work. It's a Bluetooth local area network link. So you can connect this up by Bluetooth to your MATLAB, download the gain into it, and then apply it to see if we do get a true, like almost critically damped response from the thing. And because when it flies, it data logs, remember, when it data logs, so we can actually collect the data after it's flown and actually see what that trans response looked like. So this is the big advantage of having our little 40 pound drone. Um, we can do all these designs, we can put the controls into it, and we can fly it to see if it really works. So let's keep our fingers crossed now that a 1.5, 0 0.9 is actually quite a good little design for the drone and it doesn't go wrong and crash off into my garage wall. Um, so fingers crossed and let's see the real flight next. Right, so here's our MATLAB analysis now and I've inserted this transfer function here. Um, and I'm looking at this to, to come up with this control again at the end. So I've chosen it's a different, slightly different way of doing it, this, but it's just getting the same answer. My zero was at 1.66, so I put that in, and I'm making sure I get my gain at 0.9 to give me my design points. If like I'm using MATLAB to check what I did was correct. So I put in this, these two, this one, and I put this in, but without the 0.9 in. Is going to be s plus 1.66 of it there it is there so i'm plotting the root loci of this function here now and this is the root loci plot and dragging my mouse along here and when i get to a certain point here i can see natural frequency is 12 which is what we're after damp ratio 0.75 and here's the root at minus 9 plus or minus 8j or 8i and the gain is 0.9 so that 0.9 now is going in there so it sort of confirms now that the design I did was correct. It's, maybe, it's a way of checking, really, if you like, what I've done. I can then put these gains now of 1.5 and 0.9 into here and simulate this. So if I simulate the response, this is the this, this simulation now. So it's hardly got any overshoot at all in. And this is the sort of time response I've got with this particular controller. I then put this controller then onto the drone and flew the drone. We can see the drone fly in a moment. 
when we've done this particular little video, but I then stored the data and replayed it and then compared it now. So this is the actual drone flying with those gains, and this is the simulated value. So you can see the shape we've got here, quite similar shape and quite similar transient. So next thing to do is actually watch the drone now as it does this transient response. And then we can then, it, this is where it lands. So it, if it comes up to the height of 1.1 meters. So it's 1.1 meters set point on this. And at a certain point here, it decides to land. When it gets down to here, this last part, you can't measure very accurately. So it just sort of stops measuring. So this is uh, the transient response we got from the real drone. And we'll compare that now with the flight, which we're gonna see next. 